Oh, lovely modern art. I still look at this shit. is so limiting and emotionally draining. Welcome to Netflix Renial Scenes, where I put myself through some Netflix Renial movies and give you my heartfelt opinion on their overall qualities. And hopefully save you some hours of your time because oh my fucking god. So here we go. Velvet Buster. It's a movie directed by Dan Gilroy and starring Jake Millenhall as Morphandy World, Rene Russo as Rivera, and Zoe Ashton as Josefina. The latter being which one discovers an old artist who has recently died and decides to expose his paintings. Now she and her acquaintances begin suffering the punishment of putting greed before art. Very lovely concept with execution, but that doesn't matter because the trailer tells you pretty much the whole fucking thing. Shown everything from a character's death, the whole mystery, the whole premise, and even how characters change as the story goes on. And it's perfectly fine for a trailer, don't get me wrong. It has good build-up moments, keeps your attention pretty well. In fact, it's so well constructed that you almost forget these are the only good scenes in the movie and you wasted two hours of your life. I had high hopes for this movie, since it has a particular premise since it categorizes itself as a parody of the art industry and a horror film. And to my opinion, it falls short in both ends of the spectrum. It feels hollow, it lacks the shocking impact of a good horror movie, and it lacks the wacky wittiness of a high-quality parody. To hear them seldom live to tell the tale. The knights who say This twisted vision of the world of art nowadays makes a good effort to reflect on its issues and showing how shallow the art industry can be, but neglects itself in a sense of engaging storytelling. The pacing of the movie during a great part of the dialogue felt like I was watching paint drying on a wall. The performance of many characters I know is supposed to be deceitful, but many times comes out simply as bland. Ving Millen held the most outstanding performance because at least his character felt like he had a wider personality than just being a plot device. Unlike others. The horror aspect of this movie fails mainly due to one big thing. It completely fails to build up suspense. Every opportunity it has to engage you with its music, special effects, or even with the neurotic acting of the characters, it basically f***s up. It feels like they are taking the easy route. There are plenty of characters who could have been exploited to add to this, but their potential was relegated to just being cool trailer scenes and nothing more. I believe this is what annoys me the most about this film. I got lured into watching this by the Hobo Man, an animatronic not that kind, he represents the forgotten and abandoned worker of the American nation, but his appearance was another disappointment. As he was shown in the trailer, I expected a Terminator kind of character or a haunting vision of social critic, but it was not. And God, it shows! The suspense is null. The build up to what is supposed to be dramatic scenes is meaningless as the payoff is completely worthless, having the film feeling like a few cool scenes stitched together with bad failure and poor timing. Since they already show the best parts of the movie in the trailers, this two hour long movie felt way way longer. But you can say that this is supposed to be a parody, a critique, but the humor in this movie is dry, dry as a fucking cracker. Probably were supposed to shackle or enjoy yourselves at the optic personality of their characters, or at how they backstab each other or how cynic they all are. But almost no attempt at comedy if there is one hits up. But I'm not sure if it even succeeds as a satire itself. It has the intention of the theater of the absurd of UNESCO, but it takes itself so seriously that it doesn't allow itself to be entertaining. This film, in a summary, is a good concept for a trailer stretched up to a full-length movie, which is obviously the formula to get a freaking mess. From a storytelling perspective, the switch between protagonists isn't engaging and its overall plot feels weird and forced. The transition of characters from evil to good and vice versa doesn't have the impact it needs in order to handle the weight of the film. And I believe they could have taken advantage of the subjectivity art inherently carries, making this a true psychological thriller about how greed can destroy your passions, how we get consumed by our sins, stating the beauty of our creations, 
but the whole art theme feels mostly as an excuse to have a nice looking aesthetic with intent at commentary that doesn't work quite as expected, doesn't it? Or maybe to make the whole movie look chic and feng shui and also I almost forget the namesake of the film, The Velvet Puzzle, was a disappointing surprise which felt completely underplayed and completely unappreciated. It felt like something just to name the movie after, actually. Like a last time or last minute choice. To finally end this, this movie has a good message of don't let greed overcome your passions, but it utterly fails at its delivery. So I give this movie 3 I can't save you out of 10. This movie proves the point that being nominated at a film festival doesn't guarantee an entertaining film, so if you want to watch a film with a good social commentary, which was also nominated in a film festival, I recommend you The Grand Bane or Swim or Swing, if you're American. A French film about a masculine synchronized swimming team. I know it sounds swaggy. This movie talks about masculinity and how we shouldn't dig our noses in the life of other people. And it's also way more fun than Tierra Circular de Tercio Velo. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, you can follow me on Twitter where I post random shit. If there's any other film you want me to take a look at, please leave it down there in the comments. Till next time.